Hello, good morning, welcome back. So, in the last uh, few classes, we discussed about the forward and inverse kinematics of uh, manipulator. So, this forward and inverse basically is a position relationship. So, we were trying to see how we can uh, relate the joint positions to the tool position or if we know the tool position, how can we get the joint position or if we know the joint position, how can we get the tool position. So, that was the forward and inverse kinematics relationships. But in most of the uh, robot applications, we are not only interested in uh, position, but we are interested in the velocity relationship also. For example, if you have a, a robot and uh, the tool tip is given uh, like this. So, you want this to move to this position and that position we just want this to have a particular velocity also. So, we want this to move from here to here with a particular velocity in the Cartesian space or we want to say that in the tool configuration we want to have a velocity. So, we want this to be moved from this position A to B with a particular velocity either a constant velocity or a, a velocity profile defined by the user we want this to move. And if that is the case, we need to move the joints also. So, these joints also need to have some velocity to get the Cartesian velocity. So, if we have an x dot, we want to get an x dot, we need to know what is the theta dot corresponding to that and then how can this be related. So, that is the uh, velocity relationship or differential relationship. So, how this theta dot, the joint velocity and the Cartesian velocity x dot are related is known as the differential relationship or differential kinematics in manipulator uh, kinematics or in the manipulator analysis we call this as the differential kinematics. So, we will try to see how we can develop this relationship once we have the position relationship how can we convert or derive the differential relationship for manipulator. So, that is going to be the discussion we are going to have. So, we will uh, talk about the tool configuration and joint space velocity. So, joint space velocity is basically the theta dot and then the uh, theta dot ok and uh, tool configuration velocity is the x dot. So, you have theta dot and x dot. What is the relationship between theta dot and x dot is the one which will do that is the tool configuration velocity and uh, joint space velocity. When I say x it, uh, it shows that it is the x y z as well as the angular velocities uh, linear and angular velocities in the Cartesian space. And, and we have uh, when we develop this relationship we will see that these two are related through a matrix and then that is basically we call the Jacobian of the manipulator or the Jacobian matrix. So, we will talk about uh, the tool configuration Jacobian as a velocity relationship and then we, uh, we can mention that is uh, the manipulator Jacobian which is the generalized form of this uh, uh, Jacobian which can be used for other applications also not only velocity relationship we can use the uh, use it for the uh, force relationship also. Now, uh, when we uh, go through this and when we know that if you need to get theta dot uh, x dot from theta dot we can actually get uh, x dot from theta dot if you know theta dot we will be able to get x dot because theta dot is that you can control. So, we will be able to get x dot the other way is also possible theta dot can be represented as a function of x dot and we call this as an inverse relationship. And when we uh, have this kind of relationship we will see that in some situation or within the workspace of the manipulator there may be many points where you cannot move the uh, manipulator because of some constraints and that we call it as the, the singularity in the workspace. So, we will uh, talk about the singularity and how they are actually related to the uh, tool configuration and space, joint space velocity that also we will try to understand. And then when we talk about singularity there are two types of two types basically the boundary singularity and the interior singularity which we will uh, discuss and, and uh, we will talk about something called a generalized inverse because when we try to find out this inverse relationship for the velocity we will find some difficulty in getting the inverse of a matrix then we will uh, use something called a generalized inverse to 
solve this problem. And finally, we'll, uh, okay, that is pseudo inverse is one form of the generalized inverse. And uh, finally, we'll talk about the statics also, where we will be using the uh, relationship that we developed in the differential kinematics to solve for the static analysis of manipulator. So, this is going to be the discussion that we are going to have. Okay, of course, we will uh, e solve examples as we discuss in all these uh, topics. Okay, so, I already mentioned about the differential relationship. So, we have theta that is the joint uh, uh, parameters or the joint positions and then you have this position of the tool tip which has got the position vector and the orientation also. So, you have the position and orientation of the tool in the Cartesian space that is known as the tip location in Cartesian space and then you have the tip location in joint space. So, the tip location in joint space is represented by the corresponding joint angles which give you the tip location. And as we know that they are related through the forward kinematics, so f is forward kinematics of theta and theta is the inverse kinematics of x. So, if you know x, you can apply inverse kinematics and get the theta and if you know uh, theta, you will be able to get the x using the forward kinematics. So, that is the relationship we have. Now, what we are interested in is getting the x dot and theta dot. Okay. So, the, uh, the reason why we need to do is to the robot path planning a problem is formulated in tool configuration space because we are interested in the velocity of the tool and uh, most of our problem will be formulated as velocity of tool, uh, uh, tool or the end effector. And the robot motion is controlled at the joint space. So, always the motion is controlled at the joint space. We cannot control the uh, tip directly. Though we want the tip to have a particular velocity, we cannot command the ve uh, velocity directly. We need to command the joint velocity. So, we can control the theta dots and then we need to get the x dot. So, what kind of uh, relationship exists between these two is important for us to comment theta dots. So, how do we actually comment theta dots uh, to get an x dot or for a given uh, for a desired x dot. So, I have a desired x dot. I have a desired x dot. I want to know what theta dot will give actually give me this x dot. So, that is the relationship we are interested. So, that I can uh, move uh, theta or move the join with a particular velocity so that I will get a desired x dot at the end effector. So, this can actually be obtained as if you represent x as w q where w is the relationship between uh, q, q is the join variable. So, we will refer theta in case theta, theta is an uh, angle, but we will refer q as a join variable whether it is theta or d or prismatic or uh, rotary joint, we can use q as the join variable. And then we can say that x is w q that is a function of q instead of f k we will that x is w q where w is a tool configuration function and q is a join variable. Now, we can actually x dot if you want to write we will be able to write x dot as a function of q dot and the relation between this x dot and q dot this is a theta dot okay, theta dot and uh, x dot. So, this can be written as x dot is equal to j q q dot. So, we will be able to write this uh, x dot as the function can be written as j q q dot where j is known as the Jacobian and it can be obtained by taking the partial derivative of w with respect to q. So, if you have x is w q, so we have x is equal to w q. So, we can write it as x dot is equal to partial derivative of w q dot. So, that is the relationship that you can get. Sorry. So, when x is equal to w q, you will be able to write x dot is equal to partial derivative of w with respect to q, q dot. So, that is the relationship that you can see. So, you will be able to write x dot is equal to j q q dot, where j is the matrix which relates the joint velocity and Cartesian velocity and this matrix is known as the Jacobian matrix of the manipulator or we call it as tool configuration Jacobian because it relates the tool configuration velocity to the joint velocity. So, we call it as the tool configuration Jacobian and uh, the elements of j. So, now j will be a 6 by n matrix because n is the number of degrees of freedom and uh, 
uh, we have 3 linear velocity and 3 angular velocity. So, this would be 6 and it will be a 6 by n matrix and this element of j, j k, j q, j k, j q is given as partial derivative of w k q with respect to q j. So, that is basically the uh, elements of Jacobian. So, once we have the forward relationship x w q, so that is basically the forward kinematic relationship, we can take the partial derivative of that relationship with respect to the joint variables and that will give you the Jacobian matrix and then x dot will be Jacobian multiplied by q dot. So, that is the relationship velocity relationship that you can derive from the forward kinematics. So, j is the Jacobian which relates the tool configuration velocity to the uh, joint velocity. So, this is the uh, relationship x dot is j q dot. So, if you know q dot you can actually get uh, x dot by simply multiplying q dot with j. So, that is Jacobian ok. So, k is 1 to 6 and then j is uh, 1 to n, n is the number of degrees of freedom. So, this can be written in the matrix form as like this. So, if your x is w q, we will be able to write down the uh, j elements as like this. So, you have this x dot as x dot, y dot and z dot. These are the three uh, linear velocities in x direction, y direction and z direction Cartesian space. And then you have this omega x, omega y, omega z which is the angular velocity with respect to x, y and j axis. So, these are the 3 linear and 3 angular velocities and then you get this element by taking the partial derivative of w 1 with respect to q 1, q 2 to q n. So, w 1 is the relationship for x, p x is a function of, now we, we write only the position of x, we know it is a function of q ok. So, we consider this as w 1 as the function, we write it as w 1 q, then you take the partial derivative of w 1 with respect to q 1, q 2, q 3, q n, you will get the first row of the Jacobian that is for the x velocity and for y velocity you take the second relationship p y relationship. So, you will be having n relation for p y is equal to w 2 q, then you take the partial derivative of this w 2 with respect to q 1, q 2 etcetera. So, this is the way how you will get the uh, Jacobian elements, the elements of the Jacobian matrix. Now, you can see this, this is a 6 by 1 vector, 3 linear velocity and 3 angular velocity and this is an n by 1 vector because you have n joints and therefore, there will be n joint velocities. So, it is an n by 1 vector and then this would be a 6 by n matrix. So, it need not be a square matrix, it will be Jacobian will be a, a matrix uh, depending on the dimension of n or uh, de depending on the n the dimension of matrix will be 6 by n. So, for a 7 degree of freedom it will be 6 by 7, for a 5 degree of freedom it will be 6 by 5, for a 6 degree of freedom it will be a 6 by 6 matrix. So, this is the, the Jacobian uh, how you get the Jacobian. So, we will take few examples to see how the Jacobian can be developed uh, uh, for any manipulator. So, first we look only the linear velocity part and then later on I will explain how the angular velocity can be calculated and angular velocity part can be calculated. Okay, so, the for the rotary manipulator it will be j theta theta dot and uh, we can actually get the inverse also. Suppose, you have this uh, x dot known then we can get the theta dot. So, if theta dot that is the uh, joint velocities are known we can easily calculate the uh, x dot using the j theta theta dot. Now, oh, the other case if you are uh, you have you know what is the Cartesian velocity, you want to find out the corresponding theta dot. For a given x dot what is the theta dot can be obtained by getting the inverse of Jacobian, we take the j inverse x dot. So, in the workspace suppose you have the workspace, this is the workspace and you want this to move from here to here, a to b in the workspace. You can specify what is the velocity you want this, want this tool tip to move from a to b. If you can specify the velocity, we can find out what is the corresponding joint angles 
velocity, joint velocities using this relationship, relationship j inverse x dot. So, that is the inverse relationship for the uh, velocity. So, x dot is j theta dot and theta dot is j inverse x dot. So, the, though it is a uh, direct uh, problem of getting theta dot and x dot, it actually creates lot of issues when we start uh, co computing the uh, theta dot for a corresponding x dot. We will be discussing that what are the issues, but some one issue is that the j theta inverse. So, we have to get an inverse of j and uh, uh, one problem uh, immediate problem is that when it is uh, non square matrix, how do you take the inverse? So, 5 degree of freedom robot. So, for a 5 degree of freedom robot, this will be a 6 by 5 matrix and uh, how do you get the inverse of a 6 by 5 matrix and uh, we know that uh, the inverse need to be to calculate the inverse we have to have a square matrix and then only we will be able to get the inverse. But uh, in this case when it is 6 by 5 what we will do and that does it mean that uh, for this, this uh, relationship is applicable only for the uh, 6 degree of freedom robots or other robot also can actually use the same uh, relationship. So, that is one in immediate problem and another problem is that uh, this j even if it is a square matrix as you know uh, not all matrices can be inver inverted ok. They again depending on the, the uh, type of matrix the matrix and its uh, uh, properties you may find sometimes that there cannot it cannot be inverted because of its uh, rank, its rank is not equal or uh, uh, there is some problem with the matrix condition number, then you will not be able to get the inverse. So, these are the two major uh, problems that we will face when we go for the uh, calculation of theta dot from x dot. So, we will discuss that issue uh, later. So, first let us see how do we get the j for a manipulator, how do we first calculate the Jacobian for a manipulator we will see. Then later on we will discuss about the problems associated with the inverting of uh, Jacobian. Okay, we will take a very simple example initially uh, to see uh, how, to, how to calculate the Jacobian. So, we know that it is differentiation with respect to uh, theta. So, we will take a very simple uh, manipulator of a 1 degree of freedom. So, we will take a 1 degree of freedom uh, single link manipulator, planar manipulator uh, to make uh, it is very simple. So, we will we know that this is the P, I mean this is the uh, tip and this is theta. So, you have only one uh, uh, degree of freedom. So, we can easily write P x and P y, so P x is equal to something and P y is equal to something. So, that will give x is equal to uh, something multiplied by theta dot, I mean theta. This is, uh, so we will be able to write x dot is something multiplied by theta dot and these elements are basically you will get that is partial derivative of P x with respect to theta and partial derivative of P y with respect to theta. So, that will be the element here partial derivative of x and partial derivative of y theta. So, this will be the two elements in this case and as you know it is uh, only uh, x dot and of course, x dot means uh, x dot and y dot in this case p x dot p y dot. So, this is the way how you can actually get it. Now, if I do this we know that p x is equal to r cos theta, p y is equal to r sin theta and then to get the Jacobian we take the partial derivative and find out what is the Jacobian that you are getting ok. So, take the partial derivative of p x with respect to theta it will be uh, minus r sin theta theta dot p x dot will be minus r sin theta theta dot and p y will be uh, r cos theta theta dot. Now, if you write it as a matrix we will get it as x dot y dot when I say x dot y dot p x dot p y dot is minus r sin theta r cos theta theta dot. So, that is the relationship get and this is the Jacobian for the single degree of freedom manipulator. It is minus r sin theta r cos theta. So, you are talking only about the linear velocity for the time being, uh, we will discuss angular velocity later. So, this is the x dot and y dot for this manipulator. So, this is the uh, principle to be followed whether it is a 6 degree of freedom or a, a 7 degree of freedom, we will follow the same principle and then start calculating the Jacobian that is what we do in this case. So, let us take the 3 r planar manipulator again uh, it is only planar we are talking about we will see how, how can we get the Jacobian. So, look at this. So, this is the planar manipulator which we already discussed during the 
uh, forward and inverse kinematic analysis. So, we know what is Px and Py and the Pz also we know. So, we have the relationship for Px, Py, Pz because if this is taken as L1, L2 and theta 1, theta 2 etcetera and this is theta 3 we will be able to get it. So, the relationship is obtained from the forward kinematics like this Px is L1 C1 plus L2 C12 and Py is L1 S1 plus L2 C S12 and uh, Pz is D3. So, that is the relationship. Now, what we want to I mean if you want to get Px dot what we need to do is to take the partial derivative of Px with respect to theta 1 and uh, so if you write it like this we will get it as x dot is Px with respect to theta 1 theta 2 and theta 3 and Pz theta 1 theta 2 theta 3. So, that is the way how we get x dot y dot and z dot. So, you can see this is a 3 by 1 vector, 3 by 3 matrix and this is a 3 by 1 uh, vector. Now, we take Epx uh, with respect to theta 1 is L1 C1 plus L2 C1 2. So, we will be getting this uh, as minus L1 S1 minus L2 S1 2 and this would be minus L2 S1 2 and this is L1 C1 plus L2 C1 2 L2 C1 2 and this would be 0 because Px with respect to theta 3, Py with respect to theta 3 and Pz with respect to theta 3 are 0. So, this will be <coughs> the Jacobian for the, the linear part velo linear velocity of the manipulator. So, this is how you can get the uh, Jacobian for manipulators. So, whether it is a 3 degree of freedom or a 5 degree of freedom use the same principle because get the relationship from your forward kinematics Px relationship or X relationship and then get the uh, take the partial derivative get the matrix. So, you will be getting the Jacobian for this manipulator. Okay. So, send the example again a 4 axis manipulator it is a SCARA manipulator 4 axis. So, just to ensure that uh, you, you you are thorough with this uh, process. So, I am just showing one more example. So, again you will be getting Px like this if you do a forward kinematics you will be getting Px as L1 C1 plus L2 C1 minus 2 then uh, Py is L1 S1 plus L2 S1 minus 2 and Pz is D1 minus Q3 minus D4. So, in this case it is a linear joint. So, you have uh, one linear joint that is why it is known as Q3 it is the variable joint uh, 3 uh, sorry the last one is basically a uh, sorry the third one is a prismatic joint that is why Q3 is a variable and D4 is a constant. Again the same principle you apply the take the partial derivative with respect to theta 1, theta 2 and Q3 uh, and uh, theta 4. Okay. So, here you have Px with respect to theta 1, theta 2, theta 3 sorry Q3 and theta 4 same Py, Pz also. Okay. So, these are the uh, joint velocities theta 1 dot, theta 2 dot, Q3 dot and theta 4 dot. And if you do this uh, partial derivative you will be getting it as this. So, Jacobian will be this matrix minus L1 S1 minus L2 S1 minus 2 minus L2 S1 minus 2 like that. So, you will be able to get the linear part of the Jacobian uh, by taking the partial derivative like this. I hope you understood uh, this uh, method. Okay, so, let us uh, briefly talk about the uh, issues with uh, uh, Jacobian when we try to do the inverse. So, as I mentioned you can do the theta dot by taking the Jacobian inverse. If you know x dot you will be able to calculate theta dot by taking the inverse of the Jacobian J inverse. But many cases uh, you will be having difficulty in the uh, in calculating the J inverse because J is a function of theta. So, the Jacobian is a function of theta as you saw, saw in the previous cases you can see this is a function of theta as theta value changes the Jacobian matrix also changes. So, for any different uh, position of the tool tip you have different uh, matrix uh, the, the elements of matrix changes. So, your Jacobian matrix also changes. So, it is not uh, fixed for a manipulator as the position changes your J also varies 
and there may be some position in the workspace that this j become non invertible that is the uh, when that is moving or when the theta value changes there may be a situation where the jacobian may not be invertible for all the values of theta assuming that j is a square matrix for the time being in that case also when the matrix the manipulator is moving uh, in the workspace then you will see that at some for some values of theta the jacobian may not be invertible that is because the jacobian loses its rank so if it is a uh, 6 by 6 matrix then the rank of the jacobian will actually come down to 5 at some point then you won't be able to invert it so that kind of situation will be common in manipulator workspace and that kind of situations are known as uh, the singularity it's okay so at certain points in joint space jacobian loses its rank okay for some values of theta the jacobian loses its rank and there is a re reduction in number of independent rows and columns in the jacobian so initially it was a uh, uh, 6 by 6 matrix but then after some time it actually become the matrix is still 6 by 6 but the independent uh, uh, rows or columns reduced uh, reduces because of the uh, position of theta and it, it loses rank it becomes 5 that situation then you such situations are called as joint space singularities and you won't be able to invert the jacobian at that point and when you are not able to invert you won't be able to find a theta dot because you have an x dot and at that particular configuration of the manipulator that particular joint uh, positions you find that j inverse is not existing and therefore you find it theta dot cannot be calculated or you for any values of x dot you won't be able to find a theta dot for any theta dot you won't be able to get an x dot so if you look at from the other point you want to move the uh, joint you want to command the joint at very high velocity but still you are not able to get the desired x dot so this situation is known as the joint space singularities and this is uh, common because uh, the jacobian is, since it's a function of theta as the theta takes a particular uh, set of value then at for that particular set of value we will see that this uh, relationship is not possible to be evaluated or any value of theta dot you won't be able to get an x dot or to get an x dot desired x dot the theta dot should be infinite uh, that is the way how you can look at it if you want to have an x dot then you need to have an infinite velocity at the joint to get this x dot such situations are known as uh, joint space singularities or that position of that manipulator is known as singular point or a singular uh, uh, point in the workspace so it can be multiple points need not be a single point it can be multiple points or as it reaches the uh, that point you will find that the manipulator the jacobian loses its uh, rank so this situation is the joint space singularity Okay, so the Jacobian matrix J Q, Q is of full rank as long as Q is not a joint space singularity. So the J Q will be of full rank as long as the Q is not a joint space singularity. So when it is singular, at the joint space at singularity, then the J Q loses its rank. And this can actually be measured by something called a dexterity measure. So how close the manipulator is to a uh, singular point can be measured by the term dexterity so we measure this as dex we define dexterity as the determinant of j transpose j or j j transpose depending on the value of n is less than or equal to 6 or more than 6 okay so this is used to uh, get the dexterity measure okay if it is uh, uh, and greater than 6 then we use j j transpose so either j transpose j or j j transpose we find out the determinant of j j transpose and that is known as that is that will give you the dexterity of the manipulator okay and for the general case the tool jacobian matrix is less than full rank if then only if the n by n matrix j is singular okay and uh, for redundant manipulators determinant of 6 by 6 matrix must be used okay this is for when the n is less than 6 or more than 6 you need to use j transpose j or 
j j transpose. Now, a manipulator is a joint space singularity if and only if dexterity is 0. So, when the dexterity is 0 that is the determinant is 0 for j transpose j or j j transpose then we call this as the singularity or that sim space singularity dexterity will be 0. So, when a manipulator is starting from one point which is uh, not a singular point or the uh, dexterity is very high then this value will be having a very high value okay. Then as it moves towards the uh, uh, singular point you will be getting it as 0. So, as it moves to the singular point it will start coming down very small values and then finally at the singular point you will be getting a uh, dexterity value as 0. So, this is actually a measure of uh, singular space I mean this dexterity that is if you have a manipulator uh, workspace So, if you have a manipulator workspace uh, like this then there may be a singular point somewhere here assume that there is a singular point here and at this point the dexterity will be 0 and other places you will see that as it moves here the dexterity will start coming down to 0. So, it may be having some value dexterity here but as it moves towards this you will see that it actually comes down to 0. So, neighborhood of this will be having very small value of dexterity and again you will find difficulty in moving the manipulator in this area. This whole area you will find difficulty because the dexterity has come down and therefore, this will have difficulty in getting the inverse. So, the theta dot will keep on increasing as it as it goes close to this area. So, for a getting a different uh, constant velocity if you want this to move with the constant velocity along this path then you find that as it passes here this area you will be having difficulty in uh, getting the desired velocity and if it has to pass through this then you will say somewhere here it will stop and you will not be able to pass through that point. So, that is the way how the dexterity uh, measure is used to find out the dexterous workspace of the manipulator. So, every manipulator will be having a dexterous workspace where the dexterity is very high and other spaces where actually dexterity is low we will try to avoid going towards to going that space. So, the uh, manipulator when you design the manipulator we look at the uh, dexterous workspace and ensure that most of the, our operations will be done within the dexterous workspace and we try to avoid the uh, other workspace for normal operations. And if you want to uh, move uh, to some other point we also try to avoid the dexterous space and then move uh, or we will plan a path in such a way that the singular space is avoided and then the robot is moving uh, to the target. So, that is the importance of knowing the dexterity of the manipulator and then as j is a function of theta you will be able to find out the dexterity of uh, I mean dexterity at every point in the workspace and you can make a plot of the dexterous workspace. Okay, so, that is the singularity when then uh, there is something called boundary singularity and boundary singularity occurs when the tool tip is on the surface of the work envelope. That is when you have a workspace when you have a workspace like this and the tool tip has already reached here the tool tip has already reached this posi position. Then we call this as a okay. This will not be the right representation. So the tooltip has already reached this point. Now this is also a kind of singularity because if you want to move it in this direction, you won't be able to move. If you want to give a direction velocity in this direction, then you won't be able to move. Okay, you have actually reached the. Uh, uh, maximum of that you can reach and then again you have a velocity in this direction you will not be able to give but you can actually move in these other directions you can move in this direction or this direction but you cannot move in this direction. So, that is a kind of uh, singularity and that we call it as the boundary singularity of the manipulator. But you can have it in inside uh, that is the interior singularity uh, and when it is at the boundary we call it as boundary singularity. And boundary singularity exists for all manipulators you cannot have uh, uh, velocities uh, uh, in particular direction when the man manipulator has already reached the uh, boundary. So, that is boundary singularity 
and the, the other one is the interior singularity. Just to tell you what is uh, uh, to explain you how the boundary singularity is calculated. So, look at this manipulator uh, for the manipulator where you have a Jacobian like this. So, we saw this Jacobian for the uh, manipulator. Uh, now, if you have a Jacobian like this, we can find out what is the boundary singularity of this manipulator. What we need to do is to find out the dexterity and then see when the dexterity will be 0. So, we can uh, identify this de de dexterity as like this, determine j transpose j and then find out this is the dexterity in terms of the uh, joint angles. So, we will see that L1, L2, S2 is the dexterity and this will be 0 when S2 is 0. So, when your sin theta 2 is 0, you will be getting dexterity as 0 and that will be the boundary singularity. You can see that when uh, theta 2 is 0 or pi, the manipulator will be singular. So, this is the case for the SCARA robots. So, you can see that when it is fully extended, then it is at the boundary and theta 2 is 0, it is at the boundary. So, it is a singular configuration. Similarly, when it is fully closed, then it is theta 2 is pi, again it is at the boundary. So, again boundary singularity. So, you will see that this theta 2 is equal to 0 or pi is a boundary singularity for the manipulator. So, this is uh, uh, how we get the boundary singularity of any manipulator. We can actually find out the manipulator boundary singularities by finding out the dexterity when it actually will become 0, then you will be able to find out the boundary singularities. So, whenever theta 2 is 0, it is actually a, a 0 or pi, then it will be a boundary singularity. Okay, uh, that is about the uh, boundary singularity. And the interior singularity as I mentioned, it can actually happen, it is a very uh, troublesome. So, boundary singularity is not a uh, problem, but uh, interior singularity is an issue. Uh, this is formed when two or more axes form a straight line, the effects of rotation about one axis may be cancelled due to counteracting rotation about the other axis. So, this kind of singularities can happen when you have one uh, rotation happening, uh, but other rotations of the joints actually counteracts and therefore, even if the joints are moving, your tool tip is not moving. Okay. So, you have a joint velocity, but you do not see any movement at the tip or the Cartesian velocity becomes 0 when your joint velocity is still exists. That kind of situations are so known as the interior singularities. So, the tool configuration may remain same even though the, uh, the robot moves in joint space. So, the joint space the robot is actually moving, but the tool configuration space no movement is taking place. So, that kind of situations are known as interior singularity. So, let us take this example for the uh, micro robot alpha and then see how the interior singularity happens in this case. So, you can see this configuration of the robot. So, the robot has actually reached a configuration like this. So, now this uh, uh, the robot uh, joints are actually uh, uh, positioned like this and you will see that this q b that is the uh, joint uh, angles are like this q 1 minus beta 2 beta minus pi minus beta and q phi. So, this is q 1 and this is q phi. So, this is q 1 and q phi and other joints are like minus beta 2 beta minus pi and minus beta. So, other two uh, uh, three joint angles are like this where beta is less than pi by 2 zero, between 0 and pi by 2 and then this situation you will see that even if q1 q1 is having ma making an angle and then q5 is making a uh, opposite rotation then this will actually remain same there will not be any change in the position and orientation of the uh, end effector even if q1 and q5 are making motions so that kind of a situation is known as interior singularity provided a3 is equal to a2 and a4 is equal to 0 then jq loses full rank along the line q beta and q beta represent the interior singularities of the articulated robots. So, these kind of situations will arise when it actually aligns in a particular uh, way and I mean the joint angles and uh, uh, the parameters are in su aligned in such a way that you have this kind of situation where the tool tip is not moving even if the joints are moving. So, that is basically known as the uh, interior singularity. So, this particular robot has got an interior singularity like this. 
So, this is an exercise for you uh, for the three axis planar robots show that if A2 is equal to A1 and then Q, Q1 pi Q3 is a locus of singularities which axes are collinear in this case. So, try to see uh, how this uh, uh, interior singularity happens and which are the axes that are collinear in this case. The planar robots and A2 is equal to A1. So, you will be able to see the situation how, why it is getting uh, 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 locus of singularities. All right, so that is the <coughs> uh, singularities in the manipulator. Now, uh, so we mentioned that okay, whenever there is uh, J is not invertible because of the uh, position of uh, joint or the joint space uh, uh, values or joint variables are uh, in such a way that the matrix loses uh, its uh, rank. So, that is one situation where actually you can get uh, uh, singularity. Another problem with uh, this inverse J inverse is that when it is a non-square matrix you will not be able to get the inverse. Okay. So, when it is a, a 6 by 5 matrix you would not be able to get the inverse of j. So, how do we actually solve this? So, one is that the j loses its rank you, you do not have an inverse and there the other one is uh, j is not a square matrix you would not get a inverse. So, that is the situation where you uh, encounter in the manipulators which are uh, having uh, degrees of freedom other than 6. So, in this case what we need to do is to get an inverse to some other means and that is known as the generalized inverse. So, a non-square matrix can be inverted and uh, we can use something called a generalized inverse in this case. So, this is in, uh, defined as a generalized inverse is defined as if A is an M by N matrix. So, if A is an M by N matrix then an N by M matrix X is a generalized inverse of A if and only if it satisfy at least property 1 or 2 of the following list of properties. So, if uh, A is an M by N matrix then we can have a X as an N by M uh, matrix as the inverse of A provided it satisfies at least 1 or 2 of this uh, property that is A X A is equal to A and X A X is equal to X. So, if we can actually have a matrix like that x is like that a x a is a and x a x is x then we say x is a generalized inverse of a if it satisfies property 1 or 2 of the this that is this 1 or 2 if it satisfy a x a or a x a x then we call it as a generalized inverse. And therefore, once you have that x as a generalized inverse I mean we, we can have x as a generalized inverse then we will be able to get the j if j is m by n we can find a, a m by n matrix which satisfy this condition then we will get that as the inverse. So, that is known as the generalized inverse of a non-square matrix. Now, a co very commonly used generalized inverse is known as Moore-Penrose inverse okay Moore-Penrose inverse is known as a uh, it is very co commonly used uh, generalized inverse and sometimes it is known as a pseudo inverse or we call it as A plus. So, A plus is known as a inverse of pseudo inverse of A. So, instead of writing A inverse we write it as A plus because it is a pseudo inverse and it satisfies all properties if uh, all properties listed here. So, it actually satisfies all these properties A x A is equal to A, x A x is equal to x a x transpose is equal to A x and x A transpose is equal to x A. So, uh, this Moore Penrose inverse or the pseudo inverse will satisfy all these condition and therefore, A plus will be a an inverse of pseudo inverse of A where A is a non square matrix. And how do we get this? If A is of full rank, so condition is that the A is of full rank. So, if it is a rank 5 or rank 7 you will be able to uh, get it as uh, is a full rank then we will see A plus is given as A transpose A A transpose inverse if M is less than or equal to N. Okay. Of course, if M is equal to N 
then it is A inverse only. A plus will be A inverse and if it is a square matrix it will be the same. But if it is uh, M is greater than N then A plus is A transpose A inverse then A transpose multiplied by A transpose. So, this is the way how you get the pseudo inverse A plus. So, pseudo inverse A plus can be obtained as either A transpose A A transpose inverse or A transpose A inverse A transpose and m is greater than n. So, now you can see what we are doing is we are actually converting this as a square matrix. So, A A transpose becomes a square matrix now because uh, A is a, a non square matrix. So, a, uh, A transpose becomes a square matrix and you find the inverse and multiply pre multiply with A transpose or again here you convert that into a square matrix and get the inverse and then multiply with A transpose. So, this way you will be able to get the uh, pseudo inverse of the manipulator. So, that is known as A plus. I hope you got the uh, point. So, even if the Jacobian is uh, not a square matrix we will be able to get the uh, inverse using the uh, Moore Penrose uh, inverse method or known as the pseudo inverse. So, you have J then J transpose. So, if you have J is inverse is J plus will be J transpose J J transpose inverse if M is less than or equal to N. Okay, that is the way how you get the uh, J plus. So, you can always get use J plus and then solve for the uh, and then get the uh, theta dots uh, and uh, get the values here. So, non square matrix is not an issue we will be able to solve it using the pseudo inverse that is the uh, generalized inverse and how we use it for calculating the joint velocities if we know the Cartesian velocity or the tool velocity. All right. Uh, so, this is just an example for the pseudo inverse. Suppose you have a matrix A, it is 2 by 3 matrix. So, M by N, M is uh, 2 and N is uh, 3 and the rank is A is 2, it is a full rank that is the rank of the uh, matrix is 2. Now, if you want to apply the get the uh, pseudo inverse, we use the uh, uh, principle of that uh, taking my converting this into a square matrix and then getting the inverse and multiplying with A transpose. So, we will be getting it as A plus is A transpose A A transpose inverse. So, when you say A A transpose it is 2 by 3 multiplied by 3 by 2. So, it will be a 2 by 2 matrix you get the inverse and multiply with A transpose. So, you will be getting it as a 3 by 2 matrix as the inverse. So, A plus will be A will be a 2 by 3 and A plus will be a 3 by 2 matrix. Okay. So, you will be getting this as the A plus which is the inverse. So, it is a 3 by 2 matrix and this is the pseudo inverse of A. So, this is the way how we get the uh, pseudo inverse and then once you have you can use it for getting the doing the calculation of velocities in the case of uh, uh, Jacobian and uh, getting the joint velocities. Okay, what is the application of this particular method? So, this is known as the uh, resolved motion rate control you will be learning this later. So, in resolved motion rate control you want this manipulator to go with a particular velocity in the Cartesian space. So, I have a Cartesian space and I will say that from this point to this point it should have a particular x dot and y dot. I will say this as x dot and y dot or I will say it should have a constant velocity in one uh, uh, thing. So, if I have this x dot y dot given I want to control the robot and then uh, uh, I want to uh, send the commands to the joints to move uh, so that you will get an x dot y dot. So, I need to control the joints. So, I need to control the joints or I would say what should be the joint velocities and that can be actually be obtained by j plus x dot. So, I can say that the control the joint velocity is to be calculated based on this and then I command that velocity I will be getting the uh, robot motion control and that is known as the resolved motion rate control. So, if x t be a differentiable tool configuration trajectory which lies inside the workspace and uh, which does not go through any workspace singularities and j q 
is the 6 by n tool configuration Jacobian matrix where n is less than or equal to 6. Then the joint space velocity, joint space trajectory qt corresponding to xt can be obtained by solving the nonlinear differential equation. That is, you can actually get it as q dot is equal to j transpose j inverse j transpose x dot or jq x dot will be q dot. So, q dot will be jq x dot. So, the trajectory for the joint trajectory can be obtained using this relationship and then you move the joints as per the velocity that you calculated. So, that is basically the uh, resolved motion rate control. So, this was introduced by Whitney in 1969 and known as the resolved motion rate control. The motion in tool configuration is resolved into joint space components that is the resolved motion rate control. So, this is the uh, way how we can use the uh, Jacobian and its inverse to get the joint trajectory and control the joint uh, uh, manipulator joints in order to get a desired uh, uh, Cartesian velocity at the tool tip. Okay, so, that is all uh, uh, for today, we will stop here. Now, we will see how we can actually use the Jacobian or how to compute the Jacobian in both uh, uh, for the linear and angular velocity and how we define a manipulator Jacobian in order to use it for uh, other application apart from the velocity application we can use it for uh, force applications also. So, we will see that in the next class. Thank you.